So what does the inauguration of the Ram Temple mean from a civilizational point of view, a religious point of view, a cultural point of view, a tourism point of view, and of course the political point of view. Two very special guests joining us, Francois Gauthier and also Amish Tripathi. Let me start with you, Amish, you of course, author of several of India's biggest blockbusters, one of India's best known uh, authors, also someone who wrote the Ram Chandra series uh, and therefore know everything about the history of Ayodhya and the Ram Temple. So, Amish, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, what is your perspective on this, uh, on, on the inauguration of the Ram Temple? Uh, what do you think some of the key significances and the implications of this are going to be? I think what is happening can be seen at, at various uh, levels. One, and the, perhaps the most prosaic level is the economic impact uh, it will have. Um, Ayodhya has been transformed. The infrastructure that has emerged, uh, the number of uh, pilgrims and tourists that will come, just to give you a perspective, Goa with decades of uh, marketing behind it, uh, gets maybe, I think around, if my numbers aren't wrong, 80, 90 lakh uh, tourists per year. Uh, Kashi, when the Kashi Vishwanath Dham was expanded, straight away shot up to 3-4 crore uh, tourists and pilgrims per year. Ayodhya this year is expected to be anywhere between 7.5 to 8 crores. You can imagine the massive economic impact that will have on a region that used to be very poor. Infrastructure has been transformed in every way. So that's of course the economic impact. Another way to see it is actually uh, the strengthening of uh, national consciousness. Uh, there's this brilliant author uh, and scholar called Dinah Eck, an American, uh, who'd written this book called uh, Sacred Geography. I read it many, many years back. And she'd made this very insightful point in that book. I'm paraphrasing a bit, but uh, broadly the point is the same, that India was not built on the power of its kings. It was built on the footsteps of its pilgrims. The Indians from across the Indian subcontinent went to different regions, particularly to the major temples. And that's where the national consciousness would get built. Ayodhya will be such a place. Indians from across the subcontinent. And I'm not just saying just from India, but Nepal, Bhutan, from Bangladesh, from whatever Hindus survive in Pakistan, many of them will come. Uh, and this will build a consciousness, uh, a consciousness of togetherness, which will be a massive impact. And the third thing is, of course, at a religious level, you can see the outpouring and the immense devotion across uh, the land and at a civilizational level. This has almost never happened in history that a pagan idol worshipping culture, uh, because the movement has been broadly one way, pagan idol worshipping cultures just get wiped out and they keep uh, retreating. It's a civilizational move. Now, Amish, a lot of people who are going to be watching this inauguration around the world are going to be thinking back to the 6th of December 1992, the demolition of the Babri Masjid, the disputed structure that, stu uh, that stood on this particular point. And they'll be viewing this as, a, as a, another step towards majoritarianism. Uh, that at least is the reaction that we're getting from many, many parts of the world and, of course, many parts of India as well. Now, of course, the Supreme Court has come out and given that verdict in 2019, which which does, in a, set, in a sense, set a judicial seal on everything that is happening in Ayodhya right now. What would you be saying about this and how would you be interpreting this for people watching in other parts of the world? No, uh, I think even the Supreme Court uh, held that what happened on uh, 6 December 1992 was a crime and a, you know, and uh, investigation court cases on that are ongoing. But uh, I think the most uh, uh, significant part in this is the process that happened post that, the process of actually how the temple came into being. That happened through a very long, laborious court process, uh, through evidence, uh, through truth seeking, through debates in a court of law. Uh, I'm making a documentary, Vikram, on this and it should release uh, uh, very soon on the story of the temple itself and my, uh, uh, it's a story of the temple from the beginning till now, from the birth of Lord Ram till now. But a reasonable part of it is actually on the court case uh, itself. Um, and we interviewed Chief Justice Bobre as well, and he said rightly that this is in a way a role model uh, for because such disputes are there across the world. I'm, I'm sure you've heard of Hagia Sophia. 
which was converted into a mosque, but was actually a church. And uh, the Pope had made a uh, statement on that when it was converted. And in fact, actually, most people forget 1600 years ago, before it was a church, it was actually a, a, a pagan temple uh, to, to the goddess. But of course, there are no pagans around in Turkey, so there's no one who remembers that. But there are a lot of Christians. And this was just converted by a stroke of the pen of the administrator. There was no uh, evidence gathering, court, a process of debate, in a sense, which works like a truth and reconciliation commission. And that's what happened in this case. There was a long court case where all evidence was presented. It was proved beyond a shadow of doubt that there was actually a temple under there and that it was indeed a temple dedicated to Lord Ram. Uh, and this was proved uh, in the court and hence this case happened. So Chief Justice Bobley said this can be actually a role model for how to settle such disputes, not through uh, force, but through evidence gathering and court, which leaves uh, there's no winner or loser in this thing. Everyone kind of accepts it. And the evidence of this is in a fact like, for example, Iqbal Saab was one of the litigants from the Muslim side. Uh, and he himself, you know, made a statement that he wants to attend the, you know, and see the, uh, do a darshan of Lord Ram. Uh, very recently, I'm sure you must have read that. Why did he do that? I think it's because he actually saw the evidence as well. There were many Muslims who in the 80s had said, prove to us that there was a temple and we ourselves will, will give it. Uh, and the proof emerged in this uh, court. So, so Amish, what you're saying is that whatever happened on the 6th of December 1992 was wrong. It was a wrong action. But the process that followed later, the judicial process in particular, has eventually given legitimacy to the construction of the Ram Mandir and the inauguration that we're going to see on the 22nd of January. Is that what you're saying? The evidence of that is in the fact that one of the litigants himself wants to come to the temple. You know, in our documentary, we had uh, one of the uh, people we interviewed was K.K. Mohammed Saab, who's, uh, who's one of the legendary archaeologists uh, in India, and he's a Muslim. Uh, and uh, he himself spoke of the evidence. And his work, by the way, went into the evidence, right? Uh, and he himself spoke of the evidence that there was a temple there, the evidence shows it. Uh, and then he said something very uh, uh, interesting and intriguing. He said, look, uh, I'm an Indian Muslim. Babar and Mir Baki were foreigners. They were from what is today's Uzbekistan. He said, what do I have to do with it? You know? Uh, right. And he said something very interesting. This is not a Hindu Muslim issue. This is an Indian foreigner issue. And it was a foreign invader who came and did a crime on, on India. And this was said, like I said, by, a, by an Indian Muslim and a legendary archaeologist whose work actually went into the court case to prove that there was indeed a temple there. All right, Amish, you've spoken about many of the possible impacts of this. You've looked at it from a religious point of view, civilizational point of view. Now, there is, of course, also the political angle, which is playing itself out, the controversy about whether the opposition should be there or not, and the big question of how it will potentially affect the general election of 2024. Uh, do you have a take on that as well? Uh, from on politics, I always say there are many far, far wiser than I am. Uh, who comment on this every night and as I always joke some of them on TV channels they comment so loudly you can hear them even if you switch the TV set off so <laughs> it might be best to listen to them on politics not me <laughs> all right fair enough we'll come back to the politics it is a little later so let me return to the civilizational and the religious aspects do you see with the Ram Mandir at Ayodhya, you know, there's never actually been a single central place for Hinduism that the sort of Hinduism doesn't have a Mecca, Medina, Hinduism doesn't have a Vatican City. Do you think one of the things that could emerge after all the development that we are seeing in Ayodhya, the construction of the Ram Temple, also uh, the tourism potential in Ayodhya itself, do you see the Ram Mandir perhaps becomes that, that central point for Hinduism, you know, for Hindus to go to congregate, the main pilgrimage spot for, 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 for Hindus? If you're saying that 100 million people are going there, you know, uh, 100 million people isn't a small number. If that many people are going to go to Ayodhya every single year, a lot of people coming. So do you see Ayodhya taking that particular position for Hindus? And is that part of what we are seeing now unfolding? I think the fact that we have so many it gives us, in a sense, uh, a liberal 
Catholic spirit, not Catholic in terms of the religion, but Catholic in terms of looking at where, you know, there is different yeah. approaches. Because remember, different gods and goddesses are worshipped, you know, at every place. Kamakya Ji is the goddess, right? So that's one aspect that gives a liberal bent. Secondly, it also, you know, become, you understand IT, right? And the most critical thing in IT is a backup. Yeah. And perhaps that's one of the reasons we survived the invasions of uh, the last thousand years because there was no one place which an invader could destroy, which would, you know, destroy the religion. We had backups everywhere. So I, so that other places will remain important. important. But everyone else, if the other major ones will also continue to be important. All right. No one central space is what you are saying, Amesh. Well. I'm sure you must be very keen to go there. What What is your own agenda? When are you going there? Uh, I I will be there on the 22nd. Uh, but uh, what I'm genuinely looking forward to, because obviously security, everything will be so intense out there on the 22nd. Uh, I am really looking forward uh, to going back as an ordinary uh, uh, pilgrim post the 26th. I'm going to take my mother along. She really wants uh, to go out there. And uh, we'll want to go and pray out there. So for us, I mean, I, you know, I'm a genuine devotee. So, uh, uh, so I'm looking forward more to uh, going post the 26th with my family. All right, Amish, thank you so much uh, for joining us.